it is easy to understand why a filmmaker like Abel Ferrara would respond to Schooly D's records out of all the rap records that were out there. There is something that's so bare and stripped and direct about those early Schooly D records. Um, you know, they, they barely sound like they were produced. There's a, there's a minimal beat, there's a little bit of a noise behind them, and then there's this guy telling his story. Those records were visceral and, and scary in a way that even all the early gangster records were. They just, they felt so raw. It really just felt like something you hadn't ever seen before, hadn't ever heard before. From Philadelphia, of all places, I mean, it's not, you don't even think about that as, you know, where the heart of, of the worst crime is or whatever it is, even though obviously it's, it is one of the cities where there's a lot of crime. But much in the way that Ferrara makes movies, it felt almost improvised, entirely heartfelt, and so simple that there almost wasn't a record there. And, and some of them were really powerful records because of that. A lot of the roots of gangster rap really come out of the success of Run DMC. Uh, Run DMC didn't write about things that we think of as gangster themes. They wrote about staying in school or staying away from drugs or different kinds of things, but they were the first group that made a point of dressing just the way the audience did, just the way that other hip-hop kids did. They would wear their jeans, they would wear a jacket, kangles, TMC kept his glasses on. They didn't wear the sort of space suit, the cowboy outfits, the real stage costumes that Africa Babata, our Grandmaster Flash, and the Furious Five wore. Also, they were the first group that stripped the sound down. They didn't play with a band behind them. They just had a DJ, Jam Master J, and a beatbox. Run DMC records were the first records that sounded like the hip hop that was being made in the parks. Uh, they weren't dressed up to go in the studio, visually or sonically. And then also Run DMC wrote songs like Hard Times, like It's Like That, and songs that were more sort of straight reporting about what was going on in the streets, what was going on in the reality of their listeners' lives. And Run DMC became the biggest hip-hop group in history. They became one of the, the biggest pop groups of all time. Uh, certainly in the 80s, they broke down doors that, that nobody even knew were there before. And what you started to see were, in different places in the country, um, artists that were picking up on that dressed down, plain-spoken, straight-ahead approach that Run DMC took and making it harder and making it more real and making it more about what life in their streets was really like. And that started happening more or less at the same time in different parts of the country. There was Boogie Down Productions making the Criminal Minded record in New York. There was Too Short starting to make his uh, more sort of sex rhymes, you know, taking more of the, 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 the pimp approach in the Bay Area. Ice-T starting to write uh, songs like Batter Ram and, and songs about the gangs in L.A. And in Philadelphia, there was Schooly D. And with his early records, with... PSK, PSK stood for Parkside Killers. Schooly D was making really early breakthrough records for their approach to violence, their approach to life in the inner city, to life in the streets. Those Schooly D records really were, were shocking uh, when they were coming out. They were actually really sort of scary when they were coming out to a lot of people. And if you can make a, a record that freaks people out, scares them, that's a really, that's a powerful thing. <laughs> And What's your process? What's your My process, process is like, look, okay, it's like to, to become Schooly D, you know what I'm saying? It's like I got to like do this whole fucking thing because Schooly D is a cartoon character. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's my evil twin. Mm -hmm. It's like protection. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. Abel told me that a couple of things. Like, people don't really want to know you, Jesse. Mm -hmm. It's like, stop. It's like, I used to get my feelings hurt. It's like, people don't give a fuck about you. They give a fuck about Schooly. So whenever you're in public, you have to remember to be Schooly D to protect Jesse. Mm -hmm. Because Jesse is the guy who's home. I have a daughter. I fucking cook every day. We have mm -hmm. like sit down, have dinner. Dude, you know what I'm saying? Man, so. Hop in the tub, man. Get ready, man. So we don't keep these dudes. Um, <laughs> we said the bad word. Us up, mm -hmm. like straight up. You know what I'm saying? It was like he was like a. When he died, it's like when he died, it's like they didn't even know where he died from. How old were you from. when he died? This was like uh, 
five years ago. And it was kind of fucked up because it was like, um, when I was 14, he just like, just like gave up on me. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he helped out everybody else, but he just like gave up on me. But it was like, because I was becoming him. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, he was schooling dick. Like these shoes, my father had these shoes. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it was fucked up because I got a picture of me and my son. My, my son, when was shy sitting on my lap, and my mother had the same fucking picture of me sitting on my father's lap. Oh, well, we're all doing yeah. to become our fathers. That's like, I don't want, you know, but the thing is, like, I don't want to be. I, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you, you, it's like, you don't, I, like, I don't want to be him, but it's like, I couldn't be school D without my father. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because my father was, like, the ultimate player, fucking, like, gangster, like, fucking, like, you know what I'm saying? We had, like, 20 guns in the house, you know, we, like, he would, like, drink, like, you know, Jack, Jack and shit, like, driving and shit in his car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, so, it was like, but when I, beca- when I was starting to become him, it was just like, um, he just, like, I was, like, ostracized from the family. What about your brothers? What, what, what was his relationship? They needed help. Yeah. See, I ain't need no fucking help. Mm-hmm. I know. I'm, I'm not even, when I was 14, when he was like, he just like kicked me out. He's like, I ain't need. After that, it's like from 14 to now, I'm like 41. It's like I didn't need no fucking help because I knew what the fuck I was gonna do. Mm-hmm. Like I knew I was gonna live here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew what kind of car I was gonna fucking drive. But them motherfuckers, they like, they needed fucking like help. Where your uh, older brothers at now, man? My older brother is like he's part school D. He's incarcerated. I don't know where the fuck he at. He escaped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He always escaped jail. I'm serious. He, it's like, he, he, bro, he bust out. Yeah, he busted out. But like, <laughs> me, Schooly D is like my father. It's like my brother. It's like, you know, it's like everybody. It's like, you know, Jeff. It's like everybody from Parkside is Schooly D. Everybody from Parkside is Schooly D. You know what I'm saying? Because if I write a song, if I'm writing a song, sometimes I might think of man. You, you, you know what I'm saying? If I'm, if I'm writing a song and shit, sometimes I might think of like my brother. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm like, the, the, being a, a, a comic, I think of like, I think more like me. Because I was like, you know, it was like, I was kind of like scrawny, like younger. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like really skinny and scrawny and all that shit. So I had to like, you know, laugh my ass out of like, you know, mm-hmm. fights with motherfuckers like this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's who Schooly D is. The Schooly D is the ultimate boy, but he's the ultimate fucking man. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Schooly, you know, he'll take no shit. When, when was the first time you used the name Schooly D, though? That's what I've always wondered, man. Like, 82. Because, you know, back in the day, you were playing ball with these big schooling motherfuckers. <laughs> and, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We go be a school, I'm 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 a school. <laughs> here I come. <laughs> and it was like, like I had like a 36 <laughs> inch vert. I could dunk. I had like this you big could... ass thump. Yeah, I could dunk. No, dude. Yes, I could. I could fucking dunk. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was just like, it was, it was, so it was like, I just like that said, was the number one dream once you got yeah. on the court to yeah. get yeah. in the room. You, you get to you that room. You had to get the ring. If you couldn't dunk, you had to either be able to touch the backboard yep. or you had to be able to touch the rim. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it was, so I just like mm-hmm. said D. <laughs> because it was like schooly D. Because like everybody had like, it was like Ronnie G. And I just didn't like my fucking name. It was like no Steady. Jesse. It was like, it wasn't going to be no Jesse. Cool. Steady. Cool. Steady. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I see. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody had like those fucking yeah, names, man. Deep. But that, 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 that the, it just like just flowed, man. It was like, but they, trust me, they laughed at that shit the mm-hmm. first summer. Mm-hmm. The next summer, I was like, yeah, yeah motherfuckers. What was the music that you most liked to listen to? Uh, Prince, Uptown. Uh, and it was, uh, Funky Four Plus One, mm-hmm. rapping and rocking the house. Was that a bad motherfucker? It was like nah. a twenty-minute fucking rap. Mm-hmm. See, back in the day, like it, it was like twenty minutes of just like shy rock, or, and it was just like they just they like, kept rapping. And it, but the thing is, is like they had like different versions and shit like that, and it was just, it was just like like and everybody would just like do something. It was like somebody was hard, somebody was like smart, somebody was like, you know what I'm saying, somebody was cool, and you know what I'm saying, like cool Keith and all that shit. It was just like, man, that shit was like so, that made me want to rap. But Prince, I, cause I was in the art. I got back in the art, like sculpting and painting and all that shit. It was like, mm-hmm. um, cause I left music alone. But Prince, 
actually brought me back into music, Uptown. It was just like, he just, that album, because he just like, he played everything. And it made me seem like, like you know, like, you know, fuck that. It's like, why can't I, I play everything? Why can't I just like do everything? You, you dig what I'm saying? It's just like, but it was like, I just didn't have, where's my guitar? Well, well yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that was, all I had was left was my guitar. We had a band. All I had was like my, my guitar and shit. Everybody sold their gu guitars and drums and shit like that for like drugs and shit, like my brothers and gangs and all that shit. It was like, I was in, in that um, planner. Well, in, the, in the planner. In the planner. Yeah. No, that's the one. That's my, yeah. that's my first guitar. When I was fucking eight. This is Damn. my guitar. Yeah. You still got it? Yeah, this is my guitar when I was eight. Beat it! This is, my, <laughs> this is my guitar when I was eight. And it was just like, it was. I didn't want the guitar, I wanted the bass. Mm -hmm. But I was like short, from, my family thought I was gonna be a midget. <laughs> I'm serious, it's like they, I was like really short. It's like, I grabbed the bass, my father, like, my father was like, pick shit, I grabbed the fucking bass. And my father was like, man, fuck that shit, man. You too little to play the bass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they gave me the guitar, but, so, but I always played the guitar like the fucking bass. Mm -hmm. And this is like, this is like, you know, this is, you know what I'm saying? I got oh. this shit signed and shit, you know what I'm saying? I got this shit signed and I don't shit. I know who that is. Who is Sir that? knows devoid of funk, baby. Oh. This motherfucker was just like he, and that changed. That really changed my life because that and meeting Bootsy and it's like, like, like saying like putting Schoolie D into the cartoon world. It was like it was like a cartoon. I would never take pictures. I would like when people wanted the eight by ten. I would just like I would draw this shit, which was you know which made motherfuckers crazy because they didn't know what the fuck I looked like. But it didn't, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? It didn't matter anyway, right? What was, what was the first, the very, very first record, though, that you put out? Gangsta Boogie, 1983. And you drew the cover and all the artwork Yeah, because it was like... What did you draw on it? I, I remember just like sitting, uh, doing a circle. It said, do a circle, put a hole in the middle. <laughs> Sitting in my mind, my mom upstairs, like smoking some weed and just like just drawing and shit, like five, two, two, like doing graffiti, cut masses, MCs. And my mom was like, You smoking weed? And I saw you had to light a cigarette. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You had to light a cigarette and like some weed back in the day and shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just like she smelled the cigarette. <laughs> but you know, they knew that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like drawing this shit, just like, and motherfuckers told me they didn't want to hear this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like talking shit, but first it's like on the corner selling some weed, and then came along the sucking MC said, "Yo, Holmes, what's up with that? You know what I'm saying? Can I get me a what, what, what's a five dollar sack and shit yeah. like that? You know what I'm saying? Come on home one night. I was on the L, a sucking MC trying to snatch my Zell. You know what I'm saying? Like real shit." Yeah, yeah. I said, yo, Holmes, what's up with that? I pulled my eight and he gave him back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what that shit should have happened. I used to carry, you know what I'm saying? It's like I used to carry a big ass eight and shit. It's like I pulled my eight and he gave him back. Like, Give me my motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? Give me my motherfucking gazelles, nigga. You know, I used to carry, I, used to, I, I had this like polo, remember the green polo bags? Yeah. I used to have a, a, a green polo bag. Mm -hmm. I used to keep my pistol in my polo bag. So when you want to, you want to L, you know, you got you know, you know, say so you just got your your shit hanging out. It's like they bah. You ain't gotta, you know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta reach for it. You gotta do all this and shit. You just like bah, bah, bah. But it, it was like I had to stop, you know, it's like that shit got embarrassing though. You go know, like, you know, I remember like um meeting Rashad. So you go meet the girl mom and shit like that. How you doing, Mrs. Smith? <laughs> oh, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just to fall out and shit. That shit happened to me so many times. I hate to, oh shit. Oh, no, no, not criminal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> shit, motherfucker. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, everybody. And so it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? shit, like, you know what I'm saying? You'd be like, you know, so you'd be in the movies and shit. It's like you get up, you, you put a hair and shit, you know what I'm saying? You get up and shit, and you got to run back in the movies and shit. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, now you coming back in. I got my pistol. You know what I'm saying? I got my pistol. Who let you in with a pistol any goddamn way? But it's just like, yeah, you, you can't, you know, but you get nervous when you carry. When, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Did you ever carry a gun every day? Not every, every day, day, man. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. When you forget that motherfucker at home. Yeah. Who that? You a nervous motherfucker, right? Oh my like, shit! Oh my god! I forgot my pistol. You know what I'm saying? It's like motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You like you like that, right? So it's like, just gotta get rid of that shit. Man. Yeah, yeah. 
Wait, what were you doing first though? Were you rhyming or producing? For I was fucking just like or spinning doing both. because you were spinning them? Um, I used to play like fucking like guitar. I was in the band and all this shit. So I was like spinning, was but it was like twenty fucking DJs. Mm -hmm. And all the chicks, they, you know what I'm saying? Everybody wanted to be DJ because everybody. Yeah. But I like I had music. <coughs> like my father was just like he was a, he was just like he he had every fucking record. He like had mm -hmm. like at that time it was like he had like. Before it was like DJs, he had like 5,000 records. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he was the one, you know, on every block, they they drag out the, you know what I'm saying, the speakers stereo and shit. Stage. The stereo yeah. was like on Sunday, pull out the fucking like 12 gauge, right. and like, you know what I'm saying, on the porch. <laughs> and, and my mom was so, sort of like the gen look. Yeah. <laughs> she oh my God, this motherfucker. <laughs> This motherfucker. I think that's the universe. Man, she's just like, it's like, like Jesse is your fuck. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My mama sit on the 12 gauge and fucking drink, you know what I'm saying? Johnny Walker Red and shit, Johnny Black and shit, just be like fucking just drinking. And like everybody waited for Sunday in the summertime because they knew that my pop was gonna bring the record. But I was the one controlling the records. Mm -hmm. And the girls was digging it. Play that John. Play mm -hmm. that John. I was just like, damn, 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 damn. And back in the day, they, they did have two, you know, you know, on the they had two turntables back in the day. Mm -hmm. On the big like, huge um component oh, sets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, so you could, you you get could your mix. You and could like yeah. play. And that's like that's kinda ironic because that's why I heard code. That's the first time I heard Cody. He walked up to me. I'm like, he's like, yo, man, I heard you looking for a new DJ. Like, what the fuck? He, he, he was like 17. He's like, he was like this big. Mm -hmm. He was like cute. You know what I'm saying? It's like, dude, it's like I do hardcore shit. It's like, you cute, <laughs> you cute and shit. It's just like, it, 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 he said, all right, let me get on the fucking turntables and just like, let me show you. I'm like, yeah, he's like, okay, no, fuck a turntable. I'm going to get on my mom's big old, old ass fucking from the 50s. Big ass component say just, tch, 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 tch. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn. We were at PSK the next week. Where was the recording studio though? Where where would you guys practice or whatever? We would we had the fucking we had like a um, a house. Because mm -hmm. back then, you know, you get like those houses, you know, you know the houses mm -hmm. and shit. You get like the HUD houses and shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first house was just like at um Lynn's Lynn's house. I don't know how his mother put up with our shit. <laughs> I swear to God. His mom put up with with our shit, like I'm talking about 24-7, my buddy's mother, and she was just like, I don't know, was she just like putting napkins on the door? I don't know what the fuck she did, but she just like sat there and she, no matter what time, high hey, school, how you doing? You know, you, you go and practice and shit like that. And she was always fucking nice, always came in. And like, we had to practice at five in the morning. Yeah. That's what I like about these motherfuckers that, it's like, man, my girl, fuck your girl, bitch, you 20. Mm -hmm. What the fuck are you worrying about a girl? You're supposed to practice, practice, practice. If a motherfucker, if I told you to be here at 5 a.m., mm -hmm. your fucking ass is supposed to be here at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And when motherfucker told us, when they told me and Hodge to be there at 5 a.m., they didn't even see us, man. It was just like, they, we were, man, we was doing some shit that motherfuckers didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? And that, and I worked, like, in 83, I worked the first gangster, it was like Gangster Buggy. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that was, that was a hit on tapes. Before it was a hit on record. How did how did you distribute that first album, though, man? Where, where, Dude, how did it get out on the streets? How did people um, hear it? That was magic. That shit was magic. Those motherfuckers was just like, look, because I was like, you know, we was like, you know, it was like DJ Cruz. I knew everybody in the record stores. Like, school, when you come out with your shit, we'll put it in our stores. Like back then, they it was like it was only Philly, New York, and Ice Tea. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was, I'm serious. It's like Philly, New York, Ice T. That's it. There was That's, no West Coast. It was it was no nothing. Mm -hmm. And Ice T was doing those movies, breaking movies and shit. Mm -hmm. And it was just like Philly, New York. So it was like what they would do was like they would trade. So it was like the motherfucker would come down the white van from New York, would enjoy, and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All the motherfuckers, and they would trade shit. And so they started trading my shit, and they just thought I was they they thought I was Spoonie J. They thought I was the new Spoonie J. Mm -hmm. And and that motherfucker just like sold like the first month was a hundred thousand copies in New York, which in 1985 is what today is would be like selling a million copies in a month. Mm -hmm. And it was just like um, I didn't know, I didn't fucking know, dude. I just not. I mean, we we made the records. It was like a 12 inches, Gucci Time on one side, PSK, 
Um, it was like two bucks. I made a deal. Um, the motherfucker was like this. You know what I'm saying? It was like, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, 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 the motherfucker was mob, mob related and yeah. shit. Like this. So trust me, I did not get all my money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it was like, okay, I'll give you a buck. So he took like a buck 60. He gave the distributor um, 60 and he took a buck. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He taught me some, some valuable lessons. Always getting women to work for you. Mm -hmm. And you know why? Because them bitches got kids to feed. <laughs> this mom, men don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They be like, I ain't going to work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My stereo system is cool and shit. <laughs> like, let that bitch go to work. Yeah. Always hire women to do like the real good shit. And I've always hired women. He said, don't fuck them. Sometimes I fucked up and fucked them because I was young, but you can't fuck the women that work for you, man. It's like, uh -huh. And it's just like, always remember this shit. But they, they all went to jail, though, because it was like, um, they like bootleg Michael Jackson, they bootleg Tommy Boy. Um, this motherfucker, um, this FBI, they only had like four FBI agents back then, like, for like all, <laughs> no, I'm serious, like, for all the music. For FBI. For and you knew music. Them all, right? And like, you know what I'm saying? And, and one of them showed North up, was West, in like, fucking, like he showed <laughs> up like in the marsh in fucking Jersey, and all the motherfuckers went to jail. I remember the day going up and getting my last check. Mm -hmm. When it was about all the government, just like, you know, school, it's like the room was dark. Mm -hmm. It was like school, you know. You know, I always liked you. <laughs> I'm serious the fuck. It's like, I mean, well, it's like it's numb. It's yeah. like, only, and it's like, you know, you know, you so like, you know, like, damn, like two million that shit. What? No. But, he, you know, I, I had like expenses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm serious. I had expenses. Give me the excuse. He said, I had expenses. I went on. Dude, it was like this. Luke found out that the motherfucker was bootlegging me. And my manager at the time was like, he was being shiesty. I remember going at the airport in Miami going up. And Cole, we had like some like champagne and shit. Cole took the two bottles of champagne, it's like cracked dudes in the fucking head, blue. His fucking face was like all fucking bloody and shit. The police came and mm -hmm. like all this shit. But it was just like, I remember getting home and this is, this is a lesson. Um, it gave me a question, do you like your mother? Yeah, do you love your mother? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they called Warren. Mm -hmm. And they asked him the same thing. And Warren called me back, said, get your pistols ready. And I'm going to tell you something. Well, they think you a star. Now, he asked me this question. Do you have another song in you? Do you have any more songs in you? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I got some more songs in you. Because there's only two things you can do right then. If that's your only song, you got to go out shooting motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I ain't going to do this shit no more. Yeah. I'm a stupid motherfucker. This was lucky. <laughs> but he asked me if I had more songs. He asked me if I was like a lifer. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. He said, well, you know what? And it's like, they made you a star. So out of like the two million um, PSKs in Gucci Town, I think I only got paid for like, like 300,000. Mm -hmm. When was the first time somebody called a gangster rap? When was that? Oh, movie? John Leland, Spin Magazine. Who? 1985, John Leland. He was in Baltimore checking out these gangs, Yo Boys. You know what I think? I'm, I'm like, yo, you know what yo, 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 and these guys in Baltimore, they was like, they called, they was like yo gangs and shit like that. And it was like, when he was down there for like the weekend, all he did was listen to me. And see, the shit, like, like, the shit started getting scary. But uh, you've listened to PSK for like, you know what I'm saying, like 20 times, mm -hmm. pfft, pfft, and it was like, slow it down, down there. Mm -hmm. They were like, really slow it down. So he came back, he was like, you know what? Gangsters, rap, gangsters, rap, Gangsta rap, School of D is gangsta rap. That's how gangsta rap was fucking created, PSK. And my mom was like, this motherfucker was like, I was still living with my mom, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was making so much fucking money that, but I was out every week. Right. For, like, for like a year and a half, I was not home. I was still living with my mom, and it was like, I get home, and my mom was like, you know, this, this guy, T, Ice, Ice, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He keeps calling, so it's like I call him back. I call his manager George, and just like, like what's up? And Ice T gets on, just like I got the West Coast fucking PSK, and he brought PSK to the really Ice T. So yeah. you, you guys it were was, actually it, talking about this. It. The PSK was already in the West. I didn't even know it was selling like the same thing in New York. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that because gangs in Philly was the same as gangs in fucking like LA. I did not know this shit. First of all, when I was doing this shit, mm -hmm. I did not know my fuckers was gonna, like, you know what I'm saying, was like, like that shit. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was like gangs anywhere else. You, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I just thought the gangs was only yeah. in Philly, well, yeah. in New York. I didn't know it was like gangs, you know. 
but it was like it was like a hundred thousand that month in like New York, like a hundred thousand right out there in fucking LA. I didn't know about LA. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna bring you out here, man. And he like brought me out, and he's like, this is the fucking West Coast fucking PSK, six in the morning. He's the one that took me to Dre mm-hmm. and Easy mm-hmm. and all those guys. And it was like. And we would go to the studio, and it's like, so what did you use for this 909? It's like, and then all of a sudden, it's like, you hear, like, the West Coast changing, like, their mm-hmm. whole fucking shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like she's an easy E number to understand, because, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like, it, and it's like, their whole thing, it's like, their whole fucking thing that's, like, changing. It's like, but I was, like, nuts, though, because it's like, they, they, I had these girlfriends. Like they wanted, to, they wanted to sign me. Like, mm-hmm. but I just signed um, a deal with like um, Jive Records, mm-hmm. and I tried to give them the money back, and they gave me more money. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I took, I took the check back. Mm-hmm. I took the hundred seventy-five thousand. I don't want this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, they, and they say, fuck it, we'll give you another hundred and fifty. Just keep it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, shit. But I still didn't want it. it just, it didn't, it didn't feel right. Maybe I should leave. It just, it, just, it, just, it, just, it just didn't fucking feel right, man. It just didn't feel right. It just didn't, it didn't, it didn't feel right at all because I should never, I'm an artist that should never have been on a major label. Mm-hmm. And, but it's just like, when those guys got to it, man, they fucking just like did some, they, they, they made this shit so entertaining. And you know how the East Coast is. East Coast, we all like uppity. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, speak to me. <laughs> on the West Coast, they like, fuck that shit. Yeah. Kill, kill, kill me. It's like, because it's like, it's like, it's Hollywood. And it's like, the next thing I know, man, like two years after that, them motherfuckers was like fucking everywhere. Mm-hmm. The first record on job was like, smoke some kill. It's like, people, people didn't even say smoke kill. They, they, yeah. I couldn't even like, they couldn't even say it. You mm-hmm. understand? Like right now, motherfuckers couldn't even say kill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like all it was was weed. And they said, Schoolie, we need a, um, a radio record. You know what I gave him, right? <laughs> a song called Mr. Big Dick. <laughs> That's a was I psycho or what? That is a class. And he looked at me like, this motherfucker. It's like, but we already gave him like $300,000. The fuck you got it? And they made a video. And they made a video for that shit. For Mr. Big Dick? Yeah, it's like, it's like it still plays in the Playboy. It's like a, I turned into like this claymation dick. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, you know, but me, I went, I went to fuck Barbie and shit. Mm-hmm. And they was like, nah, we can't do this shit. Like, nah, come on, man. Me, I was like, you know what? It's just like, everybody thought I was crazy. They think you, you ruined your career. Mr. Big, they, they call it Mr. Big Richard on the radio. You should hear like the radio version. Mr. Because it was like Mr. Um, Big Stuff. Right, Mr. Is Big it Dick. Is it Mr. Big Dick? Mm-hmm. Ooh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Big Dick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Times. It's like I just hung up on him. I said, Is you white? He said, Yeah, fuck you. Is you white? Yeah. Motherfucker. Because I was working on the album, am I black enough for you? Because I was like so mad at like record companies and it was like, and everybody at the record company was white, so just like I just associate everybody white with evil. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was reading Malcolm X for like the sixth time. And, just, and you know, I had a white girlfriend just like, yeah. <laughs> How can I do this? <laughs> and, and and he just fucking just, you know what? He said, fuck it. He just took it, put the fucking music in the movie, he called me up, said, look, come to fucking New York. And it blew me away. This shit, they really blew me. It's like, he said, you are a film composer. And he took a big chance because it was like, I could have just like said, take this shit out. What the fuck are you crazy? Mm-hmm. And it would have cost him like a lot of money to take this shit out. But it was like, he just blew me away. It's just like, and he just like promised me that he was just gonna teach me everything about film composing. Cause we was doing, I was doing like the, the song King of New York. And it was like, I, you know me, I'm like, I, I was like, I, I mean, I was really like in the 20s and shit. Like I was like fucking like, you know what I'm saying? I had like five hours in the bank and shit, bitches and shit. I had big ass fucking crib and shit. I had two weeks to write the goddamn song. Then I got sick. And Abel called me up like the night before. So we'd be down tomorrow. Tomorrow, two weeks was up that fucking fast. So he said, do you got the fucking King of New York song? I said, hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
That's what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to lie. It's like, I got it done. I got the fuck done. I had shit done. <laughs> I swear to God, I had shit done. So I called up this cat who wanted to um, uh, uh, produce with me, this, this cat named Eric. And I dug his shit. And, and I never really worked with any, anybody else doing music for me. And just like, and uh, my lawyer at the time, Warren, was just like, you know, try, you know, try this cat. And his, and his music was like cool, so we just like, he came up with some music and just like, let's just start writing. Like writing like, like three in the morning. Then we go to the studio, it's like, that's when you're young, you know, you can write to like six in the morning, go to the studio like 12 and shit. Mm -hmm. And we wrote that shit, and I swear to God, one fucking take. The video is the only take for that fucking song. Man. One take. I did it in one take, and Abel kicked the door open. We're here! You know what I'm saying? Like, film it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, do it. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, 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 shake your cock. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like this motherfucker crazy. But it's like, that's the, that's, the, that's the take. The first time I did this shit. I didn't know the word. If you look at the video, fucking Lawrence Fishburne knew the fucking words better than me. I swear to God. He, I'm like, I'm, 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 Fishburne, like, yeah, motherfucker. Shit. You know what I'm saying? King of the York. I'm like, I'm, 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 what the fuck I say? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, I, I swear to God, I did not know what the fuck I said. I did not know what the fuck I said. Yeah. Fishburne and Abel knew everything I said. Abel knew that fucking song after the third time we heard it. Fish, everybody knew it but me. I swear to God, it was like, it was like man, I don't know this fucking song. Hey, but don't worry about it. Just like, we'll fix it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we'll fix it and shit. It's like, and he did. It's like, it's, but if you look at that video, that King of New York video, it's just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, and um, motherfucker, all, all the cuss words I know. Motherfucker, I'm straight to the point. I don't know how <laughs> And Fishburne is like, yeah. <laughs> to me, like, King of New York, like the ultimate New Yorker, ultimate, like, New York rapper, ultimate, like, anybody's as smooth as I am, it's just like, I would have to say, it's like, I just thought just like, it would be Big Daddy King. You know what I'm saying? It's like, um, cause I always ask, my, like, oh, over the years, I ask my questions, like, why did he just like choose Big Daddy King? I think I asked Abel that once, and I think we were both in the drunk and stupor, so I don't know what the fuck he said. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't, I don't even remember his shit, but he would like, he would like go through like, and I am, it's like, it's weird because it's like, my mannerisms, it's like, I, I do something, like what I just did, like right now, Abel would do that shit. Mm -hmm. And I would just like, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, but talking to him was like, I always, want, I always wonder, like, why didn't he choose Big Daddy Kane? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I would, you know, we're king of New York. Right. Right. I mean, that shit had to hurt all the rappers in New York, though. Oh, you know what I'm right. saying? Because, you know, Philly, but, you know, it's like, but, I mean, like, New York, they, I love New York. They fucking love me, and it's like, it's like, I mean, more than, like, my own, like, hometown. I don't know. I mean, he was a, a, a great manipulator. I mean, I mean, I, I think I'm a manipulator, too, but it was like, I just to sit and watch him, like, like, you know, like, sit on the phone, like, three phones and shit, five phones, and just, like, you know, get shit done. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we got this over here, we got this over there. And, you know, he taught me, like, so much. It's like, that's how you get a fucking, oh, it's like so easy. It's how you get a movie done. Go get a fucking actor. You know what I'm saying? Get somebody, go to the bank, just go to the bank and say, you know, I got Chris Walken. And they'll give you six million dollars. But the thing is, it's like, I would get scripts, for, like, two, two years, three years in advance. It would be like, write, write, rewrite, write, write, write. He would just switch writers. It's like, if it wasn't right, he wasn't going to fucking do it. You know, and I, and I think that's like, um, that is what we do the best, but that is like, that's why we get, like Abel and I, with us. like that's why we are here today, but it's also like, it can be like a downfall for both of us because we both kind of like stubborn, like, like you know, I'm not gonna do it uh, if, 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 if I don't feel it. And, and we both had like problem with like, with, with money, and just like, you know, just, Abel wasn't gonna take no fucking money to just like, you know, punk out. And I ain't gonna take no money to punk out. You know, he'll walk away from a gig, I'll walk away from a gig. And I mean, a lot of people couldn't understand that because some, we got people dependent on you and shit. And it's like, like when I first seen him, like in, like doing the King of New York, like he had this whole like 20 motherfuckers following, grown, grown fucking men. You know what I'm saying? Just like following, following him and shit. It's like, you know, you know what I mean? Like really seriously kissing his ass. And it was just like, because these people depended on Abel's fame to eat. And I had like kind of the same thing in, like, in whatever I was doing. So motherfuckers depended on me to eat. 
So when we got together, we started like working together and shit. It's like, it was, it, we, I didn't depend on him to eat. He didn't depend on me to eat. And that why, that's why it was a perfect fucking relationship for those 12 years. It was like, that was perfect because we never bullied each other about like if, you know, when somebody was broke, somebody was fucking broke. You just like, you know, I didn't blame him. He didn't blame me. And that was like the beautiful thing about working with Ava. My music has changed. It's like um, I play like more instruments. Like I really play like a lot of more instruments now. It's like a, um, I like to play drums, guitar, bass, keyboards. I mean, because it's like you have to be serious. You have to, you have to set a mood to like shit. It's like you have to be serious. I mean, being a film composer and it's like um, being like, a, okay, it's cool. Like the first couple of years, a rapper, you know, Schooly D and all that shit. It's like, but to be taken seriously, you have to like, you have to take yourself seriously. Well, you know, it's like, I don't know how, much, how seriously I take myself. Maybe by myself I do. I take myself more seriously, but um, uh, I don't. I always use live instruments. Yeah. Um, well, I heard you did that in performance a lot. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, um, so, I, you know, I, just, I don't know how to, I, don't, I mean, I don't. I'm better. I'm just deeper. I'm just, because, you know, I'm just older. I'm just deeper. It's just like, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm just deeper. As far as lyrics go, um, uh, I don't know about the lyrics and shit. It's just like, uh, I always thought I was a better producer of music than lyrics anyway. But, you know, a lot of people, like, they really love my lyrics because they, you know, it's like Abel would say, Abel listens to Schooly D and Bob Dylan. I don't know what the fuck, you know what I'm saying? He's like, your lyrics are perfect. Um, well, I think uh, as far as lyrics and music is like when I got a gig, I think I really do the lyrics, but just fucking around. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I do great lyrics, I do great music. King of New York wasn't a movie that was necessarily pulled apart and referenced, you know, line by line here or there, but people use that phrase, they use that attitude, and the, the character of Frank White, uh, you know, when, when uh, Biggie Smalls, Notorious B.I.G., was shot and eventually killed. He was checked into the hotel under the name Frank White. Um, that Frank White character he repeatedly used in song. And and as somebody who was so New York identified, I mean Biggie was all about, you know, Brooklyn, all about New York. Um, that the imagery and the, the sort of cold bloodedness of King of New York spoke very clearly to him and went to you know probably a bigger audience through people listening to Biggie records than people who would have seen the movie in the first place. One thing I think important to remember is hip hop is so often defined as if all hip hop were gangster rap. And the fact is that there's a whole spectrum and a whole diversity of different kinds of hip hop, whether it is music that's more just sort of party and club music, whether it is music that is about having a more positive message, a more conscious message, um, whether it is something that, like a, like a gangster movie, is just about telling stories about what's going on in the street. Um, there's a wide spectrum of hip-hop that has evolved over the last 25 years. The other thing to remember is, you know, at this point, hip-hop has been around for about 25 years. The first rap record on the pop charts much less music that was being made, performed live, made in the parks for years before that. The first rap record on the pop charts was the Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight record in 1979. We're now coming up on 25 years since then, and so this notion that hip-hop is a fad or a little trend that'll come and go, um, you know, 25 years, you're talking about, you know, if you move that into rock and roll terms, that's from when Elvis first went into the studio to make his first record, all the way up to the 80s, all the way to MTV, and people weren't looking at rock and roll in, in 1980 and saying, oh, well, it's a fad, it's, it's, it's gonna go away, it's not really here for the long haul. Uh, hip hop is a music that has demonstrated its flexibility, uh, its ability to embrace different figures, whether it's Will Smith, whether it's Queen Latifah, whether it's Dr. Dre, whether it's Eminem. Um, it is music that now is global and international. The gangster rap on the most hardcore edge of that um, certainly is part of what hip hop is about, but it's not the only part. It's sometimes the only part you hear about if you're just, you know, learning about this from the headlines in the newspaper. That's what everybody concentrates on. And to be honest, it's a it's a very popular. 
part of this story. It has become increasingly uh, a popular part of the story. But for kids who listen to the music, they know that it is, it's part of the options. It's one of the options that are, that's out there. It's not the beginning and the end of the story. For so long, the amazing thing about hip hop has been the ability to surprise, to create records that sound like nothing you've ever heard before, that seem like they've come from an entirely new place. With those first records, with the, the, those great school ED singles, um, he managed to record some songs that simply sounded like nothing the world had ever heard before, both in terms of their content and in terms of their sound. And those are the records that help change the direction of a music. And this is a music that has really changed the direction of our culture, of the world's culture. And so to have done that, that's no small thing. I have no School ED was running around for a while saying he invented snowboarding, of course. That's my favorite School ED story. He at one point said, we would rip the linoleum off the kitchen floor and we'd slide down the hills in Philadelphia. We were doing that before anybody was talking about snowboarding. I'm not the snowboarding expert to answer that, but uh, I, I respect that he uh, is looking for the ways that he influenced culture bigger than just, uh, just making records.